Hello again, my friends. Pastor Chad here with our Portnaz devotionals, jumping in at Matthew 5. We've been walking through the Sermon on the Mount, and we're going to continue on today, starting in verse 13. Last two weeks, I've done uh, kind of a repeat on, on uh, the Beatitudes in Matthew 5, and, and there's going to be a really important reason why, because you have to understand the blessings and who is blessed as you begin to read the next section of Matthew 5. So let's jump into it here. It says this, you, it says, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown away and trampled by men. You, you, it says, you are the light of the world, a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl, but instead they put it on a stand. Why? It gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, in the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and do what? Praise your Father in heaven. A side note today, a commercial break, all the things we do are always to bring the glory to God, not to ourselves. Not the lesson today, but a good one. The lesson today is this. If you've been around the church at any time, any length, maybe you're new to this. And if you are, I'm so glad you're with us going through the Sermon on the Mount. And if you've not read through the sermon, I hope we do this together and it becomes something you just fall in love with. But it says this, you are the salt of the earth, right? You are the light of the world. And if you've been around the church for a while, you're like, yeah, I know the church is the light of the world. We do these things. We're supposed to expose the light. And you become so uh, numb to what's going on in the context of this scripture verse. And here's why. I brought the last few weeks this idea of blessing, who is blessed. And we did a bookends last week of in the kingdom of God. And, and we've got to remind ourselves that we are, we are, we are blessed and we are, become meek and become peacemakers and become thirsty for God because we find our blessings in the kingdom of God, not the kingdom of this world. And we began to understand the first week of who Jesus is even speaking to. Who is he kind of phrasing this sermon towards? And it is not the religious elite. It is not the Pharisees. It is not those in the temple right now. He's beginning to speak just to those who are following him and who has been following him. We talked about that. It's quite a, a, a bunch. It's not the ones you thought would be Jesus' followers. Remember, he's picking those who did not make rabbi school. He's picking those who have passed, have scars. He's picking the tax collectors. He's picking the fishermen. He's not picking the ones that you would think throughout scripture would have been the picked. He's not picking the ones that are going to come and fight the battle, who are going to win over and defeat Rome. He's picking certain people for certain reasons. Why did he pick you? Why did he pick me? It's not necessarily just picking it. It's that it's offered to be a follower of Jesus. And here's what I want you to hear today about this salt and light, and it should be transforming to us, and it comes off of the heels of the Beatitudes. You see, the reason I wanted to go so specific on the Beatitudes is to remind you who is blessed and who is included in the kingdom of God. And you have to remind yourself the reason Jesus begins to unfold these as the blessed of, of, of the people around him is because these are the ones considered not blessed by many of the religious elite. These were not the ones that you thought would be included in this kingdom movement. But Jesus' kingdom, kingdom again is an upside down kingdom. So if you have the lens and the context of what he's saying right now, that there's not these super Christians and Christians. We live in a world and, and, and kind of in a more probably in a Western understanding that we have like the, the kind of Christians and then the super Christians. And I think Dallas Willard is the one that unfolds it, that there's no like super Christians. We're supposed to become disciples and we have to do these things. And it's not like there's this level of, well, you're the big Christian, so you do this and you're the smaller Christian, so you don't really have to do that. We are called to be followers. And if you're called to be a follower of Christ, you are called to be the salt of the world. If you're called to be a follower of Christ and you claim to be that, you are to be the light of the world. What does that mean, though, in the context of this Beatitudes? It means this. Those who are not considered to be the followers necessarily or those chosen are now, Jesus is beginning to proclaim you. It's you who are the salt of the earth. It's you who are the light of the world. And if you don't do it, my light will not be as bright. It'll be under a, a bowl. It'll be hidden. You are to expose the very kingdom of God. And he's telling this to the ragtag group. He's telling them to the non-elite why does that matter to me and you? Why am I getting a little bit worked up about that? Because this is the call of anybody. 
your past, what you've done, the scars you carry. Today, if you're listening to me, listen to this very clearly. The scars you carry do not stop you from allowing you to be a part of the kingdom of God and be the light of the world. The things of your past do not go ahead of you. God calls anyone who wants to be a follower of Christ, you can be included if you will say, I'm going to set my old life down and I'm going to begin a new life in Christ. The old has gone, the new has come. So who, who can be the salt of the earth? Who, who can be the light of the world? All who claim and want to follow Jesus, who lay down their identity, who lay down their agenda and pick up a kingdom one. And now as the rest of the the sermon that begins to unfold, we'll find out, well, what's the kingdom agenda? Well, a lot of it has to do with how we begin to love on people, how we are the light of the world. So this week, here's my goal. I'd like to leave you with something. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to think back, and it's okay to think good things. Write down some of the things you did. Say, man, that, those things, those were light. I was a light for somebody that moment. I, I, I know my son and I saw someone on the side of the road broke down a little bit, and we pushed their car across the street. I mean, it was very little. But it was, it was a glimpse of being the light. That we help somebody, you know, if you help someone who's in need, whatever it might be, if you, if you just begin to pray for that person who needs to be prayer, whatever it might be, what this week were you doing that began, that began to, to unfold the light or the saltiness of God's kingdom? And then I also want you to think through, what are areas of my life that I was not so salty? <laughs> Maybe I was salty in, in the definition we talked about it, but that I, that I was not so light. I, I, I actually didn't bring the light. And begin to, to pray over these areas and ask God, examine your heart and say, God, reveal these areas of my life so I can become more light, more salty, more tasteful, not for my glory, but to bring at the end, what was it for? To unfold and to shine light on the kingdom of God. You, my friend, no matter what your past says or your scars show, can and are called to be the light of the world. That, my friend, is good news today. God bless you.